Imagine frolicking in a meadow of wildflowers or mushrooms. You feel a sense of calm and contentment as your flowing dress or puffy sleeves catch the breeze. You pick vegetables or fruit that you planted in your own garden. The aroma of homemade bread fills your rustic cottage as you knit or journal with a cozy cup of tea. This is the aesthetic known as cottage core. Not to be confused with, but related to, grandma core, goblin core, frog core, fairy core, honey core, and its darker sibling, cottage gore. This movement has actually been around for years, but recently gained more popularity during the coronavirus pandemic as more people stay home and spend time online. For many, cottage core has become an escape from the endless scrolling of bad news and anxiety that comes with it, romanticizing the idea of a more simple, sustainable, and slow-paced reality. It's your own picturesque rural life surrounded by nature and off-screen pastimes. Cottage core can be interpreted in many different ways through fashion, ceramics, decor, baking, the list goes on. I'm going to explore this theme through my own art, which is bookbinding, and I think that will fit right in with this aesthetic. I have an idea to make a rustic type journal that you probably could see in a cottage and maybe fill it with my other favorite pastime, which is painting and doodling. I'm going to try some of my homemade paper for the pages. You can see how I made these sheets right here in this video. I think this activity would also fit within the cottage core movement of being more sustainable and making your own things. This paper doesn't have any sizing on it, so I did try burnishing, which is basically rubbing a hard object to close the pores of the paper. I'm also going to include a couple pieces of watercolor paper, which I have on hand. I want to keep the deckled edge that all these pages have. I think that works well with the look. To trim the larger sheets, I'm going to use this deckel edge ripper tool, which I did review in a previous video. It also explores different techniques for giving this rough edge to your paper, and I'll link that down below. I left the watercolor sheets a bit larger to sort of protect the handmade paper. For the cover, I have this brown faux leather, and I'm leaving a small border around the sheets to estimate the height of the cover. I trim that out while leaving extra fabric on the sides so I can cut the width later. Now to prep the pages for binding, I folded each of them in half. I was kind of nervous about folding the handmade paper because it's a bit more delicate, but to my surprise, it held together and it was fine. I'm going to stack my sheets like this to make one big signature or folded group of sheets. And now I'm going to estimate where to put the binding holes, again leaving extra fabric on the width of the cover so I can trim that later. And I'm planning to cut out some kind of flap closure. I'm using binding clips to hold the pages in place, but also a scrap paper to prevent any denting in the cover. To measure out the binding holes, I made myself a template. I'm planning to do a bow tie stitch, and so I marked out where I want the knots to go. Now using that as a guide, I'm piercing through the pages and the cover with an awl. Onto the binding, I'm using this natural linen waxed thread, single threading a binding needle, and like I said, I'm doing a bow tie stitch but I do have a tutorial for that, so rather than repeat it here, I will direct you to that tutorial. This video includes eight different stitching methods that are more decorative than your standard saddle stitch. If you're totally new to bookbinding, it's very beginner friendly, so I will link it down below if you want to check it out. For the flap, I want to do some kind of organic shape, so I got my tailor's chalk back out and drew a wavy shape. Cut that out and also trimmed any excess on the other side of the cover. I also rounded the corners of the cover to match the organic shape. Now for the tie that will wrap around the book, I pierced a hole through the flap. 
I went with this jute twine, which is rough and organic looking to match the aesthetic, tying a knot on the outside of the flap, and trimmed enough so it could wrap around the book twice. I spread out the strands on the end to give it more of a tassel, and did the same knot and tassel on the other end of the twine. And I like that they complement the knots on the binding. I really wanted to embrace the unplugged, off-screen idea of cottagecore and take this out in my backyard and have like a nature vibes moment, have a little painting session in the grass, but to be honest and realistic, there's a lot of construction outside, Kona's barking at everything, so it just didn't happen for me. So I came back inside to paint at my desk, which is fine too. I didn't finish all the pages in the book, but I will show you a little flip through. This first spread, to be honest, I don't really like it, but I did have fun in the process and that's all that matters. I used the handmade paper to be my swatch page. My current environment is very much desert core, so this was an escape for me. I'm not around any lush greenery or mushrooms. The next spread was inspired by the cottages I've seen with stone or brick walls and plants just taking over the home. I quickly doodled some fruit, blueberries, strawberries on the handmade paper, but I'm actually surprised that it didn't go all the way through the back of the page. Here I did a quick wash of color and I plan to do some wildflowers on here. Next spread is just a wash of blue color for a sky. I might put some forest or tree tops on the bottom. The overall book I think was really easy to make and really didn't take that long. I think the paper did pretty well. I was more surprised with the handmade paper that it held up. It was kind of nice to just unplug and have a simple thing to make and then use that thing to fill with cottagecore ideas. I invite you to try your own version of cottagecore and if you want to dive deeper into the culture or if you need some inspiration on visuals, links, I have all of that in the description below. If you want to see more videos like this, hit the like button to let me know. I would like to explore more art movements and aesthetics, so if there is something specific that you would like to see on this channel, leave a comment below. And make sure you are subscribed and hit the bell so you get notified every time I post a video. A big thanks to my studio support patrons. If you want to help me keep this channel going and become a patron, I will put that link in the description. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.